coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Tom Brady wants to own the Raiders? What does that even mean? We'll talk about that and a whole lot more. It's all coming up on Monday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, May 15th, 2023. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And welcome here, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts to get the latest edition of the show as soon as it's available. If you're checking us out on YouTube, thank you, first of all. Second of all, if you're checking us out on YouTube, it's because of my man Ari, at Ari Produces on Twitter. He makes sure we're up on on YouTube each and every day, and we definitely appreciate him, and we appreciate you. Today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. I'll tell you a lot more about them later on in the show. First of all, coming off of Mother's Day weekend, hopefully you had a really good Mother's Day. Hopefully your mom had a really good Mother's Day. And normally, I'm coming to you live from the home studio. Today, I'm coming to you live from... We'll call it Aunt Rachel's Crib. <laughs> How about that? Aunt Rachel's Crib. We're in El Paso, Texas. Uh, myself and the wife came out because uh, Cousin Matt was graduating from UTEP. So uh, we came out for the weekend. And I know there's a lot of uh, Raider Nation that chimes in on the show from El Paso. So shout out to you. It was really great being uh, in El Paso for the couple days and uh, checking out Matt's graduation. So, uh, yeah, today's show is coming to you live from Aunt Rachel's Crib. We'll be back in Las Vegas. Well, depending on what time you're listening to this show, if you're listening to it after about 9 o'clock in the morning, well, then I'm I'm already back in Las Vegas, unless some of my traveling woes happen. And we all know how I am with traveling. It always goes bad. But it doesn't go bad when the wife is with me. It only goes bad when I'm solo bolo. So what does that tell you? It's probably a me problem (laughs) instead of a travel problem. But let's go ahead and jump into the show. Uh, On Friday, the news dropped from Adam Schefter. He put out a tweet saying NFL legend Tom Brady's in deep discussions to become a limited partner of the Las Vegas Raiders, according to him and Seth Wickersham. Potentially his second uh, uh, opportunity to be a partner with the Raiders owner Mark Davis because he is part owner of the LV Aces as well. That's the WNBA team. He goes on to say discussions between the two sides have been going on for weeks and could soon be reaching a resolution. Sources say it's still extremely sensitive and fluid negotiation. Brady's investment is expected to be passive. Uh, That's a source with direct knowledge of the situation says, and he would not have any operational control or authority over the club and business or football matters. So What does all that mean? Because I saw a lot of Raider Nation losing their minds saying, what is Mark Davis doing? He's just selling the farm to the Patriots. Another ex-Patriot now going to be, you know, infiltrating the Raiders. No, look, remember when Magic Johnson was supposed to be a guy that was interested in being a a minority owner? And there's plenty of other celebrities around the league uh, that are uh, part owners of teams. Like I know uh, Serena Williams is a part owner of the Miami Dolphins. Uh, Shaq has part ownership in in teams. I mean, it's it's just one of those. I think it's the Sacramento Kings. He's a part owner of, uh, but it's a very minority uh, stake, right? And now you see Magic Johnson with the Washington Commanders. His his group that he's involved with is actually the group that's buying the Washington Commanders. So he no longer can be in partnership with the Raiders. He'll be with, the like I said, the Washington Commanders. So this is no more than that. But it makes all the sense of the world to me only because Tom Brady's already a part owner of the Las Vegas Aces with Mark Davis. We all know Mark Davis is a big Tom Brady fan. Uh, and look, when the guy wins as much as he does, you know, of course, Mark Davis is going to look and, and really admire that guy. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing to get up in arms about. Just like uh, Adam Schefter said, he's not going to be in any kind of charge or operations or any of that stuff. That's all going to be Dave Ziegler, Josh Daniels, Champ Kelly. That's all, uh, you know, the, the powers that be. Also, Seth Wickersham went on in the piece that even if Brady and Davis are able to agree to terms, at least 24 current team owners would have to uh, vet and approve Brady's limited partnership as is the case with all minority and majority owners, which I'm sure that they would. I don't think that they'd have a problem with Tom Brady being a minority owner of the Raiders. Also, there's a lot of conversation about Tom Brady and his 10-year, $375 million contract he has with Fox. Uh, that's actually supposed to start in 2024. They say that that would be unaffected by an investment in the Raiders. Uh, Fox has blessed the arrangement. Sources said that the league policy about team ownership overlapping with media employment comes into play only if the owner holds a position of authority at the media company and could impact broadcast right negotiations. Fox and NFL agreed to 11-year rights deal in 2021. So, I, again, I tell you all that. I break down all the details of what 
Adam Schefter and Seth, uh, Seth Wickersham put out on Friday about Tom Brady and the Raiders, just to let you know, it's, not, it's a whole lot of nothing. It's just another uh, investor, a little minority owner in the silver and black, and it's just Tom Brady. And at the worst case scenario, you have a winner around your organization, and there's nothing really wrong with that. But uh, again, Mark Davis has always been very infatuated with Tom Brady, and so him being a part owner of the Aces, it makes a lot of sense if he's going to sell a, a little bit of a minority share of, of the Raiders. It would be to Tom Brady. So, again, nothing really to get up in arms about. Also on Friday, the Raiders came to terms with first-round pick Tyree Wilson. And I believe Field Yates from ESPN said it was a four-year, $27 million uh, fully guaranteed contract. And, of course, they had the fifth-year option. Uh, again, I mentioned it on, on Friday's show. These, these rookie contracts are so easy to get taken care of that they're going to get done quick, fast, and in a hurry. Of course, the Raiders held their uh, rookie minicamp over the weekend. We weren't allowed to be there as far as the media goes. Uh, another reason that it was easier to take off to go to El Paso because, well, I didn't have to be covering the Raiders at the Intermountain Healthcare Performance Center. Saw some pictures that the Raiders tweeted out. Looked like everybody was in attendance. I don't believe Tyree Wilson was doing any work. Again, he's still coming back from that foot injury, but you saw guys like Michael Mayer. Uh, you saw Byron Young. You saw a few other guys uh, that were out there. Trey Tucker was out there participating. So, again, uh, it's just a rookie minicamp, and that's what's going to happen. So Tyree Wilson is now under contract with the Silver and Black. They only have, uh, who is it? Let me look at this real quick. Ja'Korian Bennett, the fourth-round pick, and also Byron Young, the third-round pick out of Alabama that they still need to get under contract. Also, undrafted free agents they came to agreement with on Friday as well before the rookie minicamp, and they've got to be under contract, right? Uh, David Agoa, he was the, the international player that the Raiders came to agreements with uh, you know, about a week back. He's, uh, he's under contract. McClendon Curtis, the guard out of Chattanooga. Jaden Grant, the safety out of Oregon State. Azizi Hearn, cornerback out of UCLA. Brock Martin, the defensive end out of Oklahoma State. Jordan Perryman, the cornerback from Washington. Adam Plant, the defensive end from UNLV. I'm actually kind of excited about Adam Plant. I just did a little bit of research on him and heard that he was a dude that really went hard in the paint, man, and continued to improve each year at UNLV and really had a breakout season in 2022. So I definitely want to pay attention to him. Uh, John Shanker, the tight end from Auburn. George Tarlis, the, the offensive end from Boise State. Drake Thomas, the linebacker from NC State. And Dalton Wagner, the tackle from Arkansas. All of those guys are currently under contract with the Silver and Black. So, again, the only guys that they really still need to get under contract are the third-round pick out of uh, Alabama and fourth-round pick uh, out of Maryland. So those two guys, as soon as that gets signed, sealed, and delivered, the whole rookie class will be under contract. And, of course, there's going to be a lot of additions and subtractions to the to the 90-men roster that they have, actually 91 with the international player on there. Remember, he doesn't um, he doesn't fit against or go against the, the numbers, so he's fine. So uh, they have 91 players in camp right now, and they'll probably sign a couple guys. They'll probably release a couple guys in between now and when training camp gets started. So uh, just a little bit of update, little news and notes there in segment number one of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Coming up in segment number two, Talked about the schedule releases. It came out on Thursday. Of course, we did like everybody else does, go through it and say, that's a win, that's a loss, that's a win, that's a loss. And I came out with, I believe, 10 and 7. And I think that that's a lot, right? 10 wins from a six-win team is a lot, especially with a schedule that's very difficult. I've gone over it so many times, and I keep somehow coming out with nine wins or 10 wins, like really consistently around that. So I really want to break down the, the schedule. And, of course, these, these predictions are guaranteed to be wrong. But just kind of want to look at where they can, you know, get some wins, where maybe a, a tough stretch could be in uh, and, and where they may take a couple L's in a row. So we're going to go back over the schedule and talk about it and see what I come up with this time. We're going to do it all in real time, right? I mean, I've done it. I feel like I've done it all weekend long, and every single time I come up with nine or ten wins, I'm going to do it again and see what I come up with. But I'm also going to talk about the schedule and, and where, like I said, they can get some wins. Maybe a couple losses will happen in a row back-to-back -back and where they can snap that uh, those back-to-back -back losses. So that'll all come up in segment number two after I tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is FanDuel. And right now during the NBA playoffs is a great time to make a fast break to FanDuel. New customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. And I don't know how much of the NBA playoffs you're watching, but I'm telling you, I've been glued to it, right? My Warriors were eliminated on Friday by the Lakers. So the Lakers and the Denver Nuggets are going to square up in the West. And then Boston, they beat the brakes off of Philadelphia on Sunday on Mother's Day. So now it's going to be Boston and uh, and the Miami Heat. So it's, it's, it's shaping up like everyone's talking about. They want to see a rematch of the bubble, the bubble year where it was Miami and, and uh, the Lakers, but it was in the bubble. They want to see it again. I don't know if those two teams are going to win. I actually think it's going to be Denver and uh, and uh, Boston, but 
That's just me. Again, that's something that you could bet on at FanDuel. They're the number one uh, playoff spot. They're the number one sports book for all the playoff action going on in the NBA. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to go over the schedule again for the silver and black. Of course, we did this on Friday. I came out with a 10-7 and record. I went on my radio show on Friday, and I believe I came out with a 10-7 and record. And for the most part, people that called in looked around 7, anywhere from 7 to, I think the max that I had was 11. So it was anywhere from that window, 7 wins to 11 wins. And, of course, 10 wins, as I picked them multiple times, is high for a team that only won 6. And the schedule is really difficult. I mean, again, if you're looking at it, I'm checking out the schedule right now. If you're seeing it on YouTube, I have it in my hand. Looking at it real quick, and we're going to go over it again. The first two games are on the road, but you look at the, the games early on the road, especially the Denver game, and I feel like the Denver's not going to be you know, the, the team that they'll probably end up being this, the, at the end of the season. And a lot of these games also, at the beginning of the season, you realize that teams aren't who they're supposed to be yet, right? They're not, they're not, they haven't gelled yet with who they're going to eventually be. And that could include the Raiders as well. I'm not saying that they're going to come out of the gates and all of a sudden be on fire and just be like in midseason form. Nobody is, especially with the lack of playing in preseason. Most of these teams use the first four games of the season as their preseason. So if you look at, if you just take it in the four game chunk, the first four games, three of them are on the road. Of course, one's in L.A., so that's not really that far of a road trip. But, I mean, you got three out of four on the road, and then the one home game that you have is a, is a Steelers game, but it's a, it's a primetime game, Sunday night football. So, you know, in that little chunk right there, and, again, I like to look at schedules in chunks, that first four, I have the Raiders going two and two, right, splitting that, that first four, losing in Buffalo and losing at the Chargers. But, you know, with the Chargers, I always feel like they're going to they're gonna win one and the Raiders are going to win one. So it's going to be a split when it comes to the Chargers. I do feel like this year the Denver Broncos, they could sweep the Broncos. You know, even though I do think they're going to get better, I don't know how, how much better they're going to be. So I think that the Raiders can can sweep the Broncos, split with, uh, split with the Chargers, and probably lose both games to the Chiefs. So if you're looking at it right there, you got, what, two, three, you go, what, three and three? That's what it would be, yeah, three and three uh, in the division right there. So that's that's what I'm looking at, the division games. But, you know, the other thing about it, as I go through these games and I'm looking at that Green Bay Packers, that Monday night game, you know, Jordan Love, who knows what he's going to be looking like at that point. So I gave the Raiders a win there, but that's easily a game that could go the other way, right? If he's clicking, if all of a sudden, they, you know, the weapons that they have around him there in Green Bay uh, are, are doing really well and gelling, that could easily be a, a, a loss right there. You know, and there's a stretch, I was, this is one of the things that stood out to me on my radio show. There's a stretch in this schedule where I have the Raiders losing three in a row. Uh, Sunday, November 12th, at home to the Jets, on the road at the Dolphins, and then Kansas City right before their bye week. So it'd be week 10, 11, and 12. I have them losing all three of those. My man DeMond on my radio show actually had them going on a five-game losing streak, losing to the Jets, Dolphins, Chiefs, going into the bye week, coming out, losing to the Vikings and the Chargers. So that was a five-game Losing streak right there that he had. I only have three. I think that the Raiders come out of the bye and win two in a row uh, against Minnesota and the Chargers. But the thing is, if they do hit a stretch like that and go on a five-game losing streak, then all of a sudden the wheels come off, right? I mean, that, 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 could, be, that could be real trouble. And, and the other thing is, when you look at the schedule and you try to determine how many games they're going to win and how many they're going to lose, and we know that these are guaranteed to be wrong, right? I mean, we're definitely, you know, we could be somewhere in the ballpark. But it's just so hard to determine in May what these these games are going to look like and what these teams are going to look like. But think back to last year when the Raiders lost so many at, at the at like one score games. Think about all the ones that they were winning and then they found a way to lose. I like remember they were up by 17 points on Jacksonville, found a way to lose. They were up 20 to nothing week two against the Cardinals, found a way to lose. You know, we're winning that Thursday night game against the Rams, found a way to lose. Right? I mean, there's so many games that they found ways to lose. And then the year before when they went on that four-game winning streak to actually make it to the playoffs, they were finding ways to win. Things were going right for them. So even if you just just say you split, split those, those one-score losses that they had from a season ago, which was what, six? Six or seven? So say you split those and you, you come up with three. Three of those you don't lose this time. Now all of a sudden you're in a much better position, right? I mean, because again, we look at that schedule last year. We look at those games and say, how in the world did you lose that? You shouldn't have lost that. Right. But you, you found a way to lose. So you think that the number would would even out at some point. That's why a lot of people in 2022 didn't believe that they were going to be a really good team, that that playoff berth that they had was more of a mirage as they were a team that played in the playoffs instead of a playoff team, if that makes sense. Right. And so now if you look at it and say, OK, well, they all all the breaks went their way in 2021. 
everything went against them in 2022. So, like I said, if it evens out just even th- like half of the time, they, they got to do a little bit better. So, I mean, there's, there's rough patches in the schedule. Like I said, that week 10 through maybe even week 13, 14, 15, that could be a, a tough stretch. Uh, I think where they can go on a nice little win streak, and I have them uh, that Monday night football game against the Chicago Bears. After the, the home game on Sunday, October 15th, they, they play the Patriots. I have them losing that one to the Patriots just because I think the defense for the Patriots are going to find a way to get it done. I'm not really a believer in Mac Jones, but I think that defense is going to do it. I have them winning three in a row. The Bears at the Bears on Monday night football, at the Lions on Monday night football, and then also uh, the Giants, the Giants game uh, at home. I have them winning those three. So that's a nice little stretch right there where maybe they can go on a run, right, and win some multiple games. And then if you're on a three-game winning streak and you got the Jets coming to your house, maybe you do find a way to win that game over Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. And then all of a sudden you're on a four-game winning streak headed to Miami, and now you're you're playing a lot better. So, uh, again, uh, it's so funny. As, as many times I've came up with this, and, and, and let me do it again. And even the games that – let me just do it real quick. Here we go. The Broncos, W. Bills, a loss. Pittsburgh, a win. Chargers, a loss. Packers, okay, I'll go against this one and say the Packers, the Packers will win that one. All right, so now the Raiders are what, two and three? Patriots, as I'll still say an L. So that's two and four. At the Bears, W. At the Lions, W. Giants, W. So, okay, so now I'm basically on pace to have a, a nine, a nine and eight uh, schedule. Uh, let's see, the Jets, L. D- Dolphins, L. Chiefs, L. Going into the bye week. So, yeah, so I have one win, two wins, three, four, five. Yeah, five and seven going into going into the bye week. Right after right after week 12, they go into the bye week 13. Vikings, if they lose that one, okay, that's another loss. Chargers, they win that one. That's six. Chiefs, they lose that one. Colts, they win that one. Seven. And Broncos. So, there you go. I just went over it and, and switched a couple of the wins and game losses and got eight. So uh, I, I think the sweet spot really for the, the Raiders, as crazy as it sounds, is probably anywhere from seven, seven wins, seven and, and ten to maybe ten and seven. You know, I think that 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 little that little window right there, seven to ten. And, and that's a possibility. And the thing about it is it, it could only be a player two here, a player two there that determines three or four W's on the schedule. So uh, it's funny, again, like I said, as many times I've gone over it, I keep thinking to myself, 10 wins is too much for a team that just won six games a season ago, but a handful of plays could change to the outcome of multiple games. So I'm looking at, like I said, anywhere from seven and 10 to 10 and seven. I think that that's, that's kind of that sweet spot window. It's a, it's a window. It's a pretty big window, but it's the window that I have for you. So uh, as we continue to kind of look at the schedule, go up and down it and, you know, figure out what the Raiders are going to do. You can always chime in as well. 707-654-4693. Matter of fact, your calls and texts are coming up next as we close out segment number three of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Calls and texts draft that Locked On Raider podcast. Voicemail line 707-654-4693. Let's start off with Raider Ash in the 916. He's calling to talk about Hunter Renfro and what he thinks the Raiders will do with them. Plus, shares his thoughts on the upcoming season. Here he is, Raider Ash in the 916. What's going on, Q? This is Raider Ash from the 916. Um, I'm calling in on Saturday, so I hope, you, hope Raider Nation had a good weekend. I hope you had a good weekend, Q. I don't want to implement my thoughts on Hunter Renfro situation. I personally don't think he's going to get traded. I don't think it would make sense. I know a lot of people may be like, oh, how come this and that? It's just with Trey Tucker, I think he's going to start on special teams and incorporate into that um, – quick receiver, a quick slot receiver, um, but just look how well Renfro runs his routes. Like, man, that route that he did with uh, – the route and the catch that he did against the Steelers, oh, my God, like, that, that is phenomenal. And I just think he's that type of guy where he's going to get those yards, like those five – like just those five yards, get us closer to the first down. So I just think it would be best to keep Hunter because that guy is really nice with his routes. And – you know, with our draft class, I think we did good, man. I'm excited. You know, the biggest key I think this season is, you know, is Jimmy going to throw to the Devontae more and give him better passes than what Derek Carr did last season? Because, quite frankly, Devontae would have had a better season if he just had better balls and got more targets on him. You know, those games where he had, like, you know, barely any targets to him, barely any yards, you know, it's ridiculous. So um, I think this season we're going to look forward to seeing Jimmy throw more to Devontae. I just think this season is going to be a good season for Raider Nation. I think we're going to improve a lot. We're going to see a lot more. And, you know, I can't wait to see Matt Sean. You know, he's getting more help on defense. So it's going to be a good season. 
Um, Raider Ash out. Thank you, Q. Sorry for the long call. Raider Ash, thanks for the call, my man. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Renfro, right? There's a world. There is a world where him and Tucker are on the team. This year, there's a world where him and Tucker are on the team. Next year, I would love to see Hunter Renfro in a Josh Daniels offense when he's healthy. He clearly wasn't healthy in 2022, didn't play in very many games, and when he did play, didn't really look like he knew what he was doing, right? So, I mean, and, and it's not just him. Everyone was trying to pick up the offense, so I don't want to make it sound like he didn't know. It's just that everyone was trying to pick up the offense, and you could tell that everyone was just not on the right page. I mean, there was always the, the Hunter Renfro running into Devontae Adams or Devontae Adams running into Hunter in Kansas City. There was Darren Waller and Devontae being in the back of the end zone in the same area against Tennessee. Uh, you know, there was multiple games where you could see just guys in the wrong spot, too many guys in the same spot, right? And so you could tell that they just weren't all on the same page. I would love to see what Hunter Renfro looks like in a Josh McDaniels offense because I do think that the slot receiver could really eat. And Trey Tucker is not guaranteed to be a guy that can step into the slot and all of a sudden thrive as a rookie. So uh, there's definitely a world where Hunter Renfro uh, is on this team in 2022 and even maybe farther than, along than that. Uh, but they didn't get a good idea of what he could bring to the table from what they had in 2022. So thank you so much for that call. Do appreciate you. Up next, got a text from Stabler's Ghost. Says, hey, Q, it's Stabler's Ghost from the 413. I've been watching some tape on Aiden O'Connell. First thing, super accurate. Also, very good decision making and really quick release. Also, he's definitely not a statue in the pocket. He's not Jalen Hurts, but he can escape pressure. He's more mobile than Big Ben was. They did some rollout stuff at Purdue and did move the pocket a bit. Bottom line, he's already good at the difficult stuff. He could become a little bit more athletic. He could sufficiently escape the rush, but can't, he can't be Mahomes. I'll take that. I think we have, may have something with this kid. Anywhere who, anyone who wears Jim Plunkett's number is okay by me. I'd love to see number 16 bring home another Lombardi. Anyway, let's go Raiders. That's from Stabler's Ghost. Thank you so much for that text. And The jury's out on Aiden O'Connell. Right. I mean, again, I've said it multiple times that I think he's going to be a really good backup. But I mean, everything that you mentioned is accurate. Right. And, and that's what I've heard as I've done research on him. I mean, the guy's got it upstairs. He's got it between the ears. Uh, he's very accurate. He's got a quick release. Right. He makes up for his lack of mobility. And I wouldn't even say that he's as mobile as Big Ben. But, you know, maybe you know better than I do. I didn't watch a whole lot of Purdue football. I'm not going to try to BS you and act like I did. So <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you. But. You know, from everything I've heard, everything, everybody I've talked to, you know, the guy's not really going to move too much. I just think that you need to be more mobile than, than what he is. But, you know, maybe he makes up for it with his quick release and, and the way, like I said, he's getting the ball out and he's very accurate. So uh, from everything I've heard, he's, he's a guy that, that Josh McDaniels should like. And if that's, that's the case, I mean, he knows what he's looking for in his quarterback. So, you know, we'll have to see. But uh, it's definitely going to be a work in progress. He's under he's under uh, under contract. He was in rookie mini camp. He was out there doing his thing. So uh, you never know. You never know what he could develop into. So we'll see. So thank you so much for that text. I do appreciate you. I uh, got a call from Raider Joe in KC. He's calling to talk about the Raiders schedule, and he doesn't feel very optimistic about the overall record for the Raiders in 2023. Here he is, Raider Joe in KC. Yo, what up, Q? This is Joe of KC. Oh man, just listen to your uh, schedule release podcast, man, and. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I know when the schedule comes out, you know, all the optimism, you know, comes with it. But I, I just got to be honest, man. I, I don't see us winning more than five games this year, and the five is on the high end. Uh, I think we got to be realistic. Uh, the draft that we just had, um, it was, I think it was really solid. Um, but they're all picks that are going to be developmental picks. They're not going to come out the gate and be successful. Um, also, when you just look at the team in general, we got worse. Um, you know, Jimmy G uh, isn't as good as Derek Carr. Yeah, he might be able to uh, know McDaniel's system uh, better, but let's be honest, he's more of a stopgap guy. Um, we lost Darren Waller. A mayor is going to take him some time to uh, develop into what he could potentially be. Um, on, on defense, we got Tyree. But he's going to take some time. He's got this injury, and he needs to, he needs to develop. Uh, Christopher Smith is going to be a really good player. Again, developmental. Um, and no linebackers at all. It's going to take some time. Um, we've heard over and over again that um, Mark Davis has given uh, the, the new Patriots guys their uh, the keys, and he's going to let them do their thing. I think that they both have at least uh, two more seasons in them, and they're playing the long games. When you look at the teams that's on the schedule, they're they're all better. They're all better except for maybe two or three teams. Um, 
Yeah, again, I'm just just being honest. We just we just won six games last year, and we are um, worse right now. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I think that this is all part of the, the the plan. You know, we got Jimmy in for the moment, and he's gonna hold it over until we can get a guy like um, Caleb Williams or or May. Um, hate to say it, you know, it sucks we're gonna have to have this season, but uh, strap up, get ready, ready nation. Thank you for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And, man, it's it's funny. That's going back to segment number two. Like, it's, as soon as you go and get the schedule in your hand and you start going through, you're like, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. Like I did multiple times, including on Friday, I came up with 10 wins, you know, and then even did it. And I'm trying to look at it in real time on the show today. And I'm just kind of looking at it. Okay, well, where can I, you know, uh, get, get rid of this W and put an L there? And it's just it's so funny just looking at it on paper. It's easy to come up with nine or ten wins. Uh, but then again, like you said, you know, uh, you, you think five. You know, I think five is, is a little bit low, but if things go wrong, a couple plays here, a couple plays there, we saw it happen last year, it could be. And, and that would be a very disappointing season, no doubt, you know, five wins. But I think the, the, the window that everyone's kind of looking at right now for the Raiders is anywhere from between seven and ten, I think is what, I think that's what everyone's, like, feeling right now. Uh, but, of course, they haven't played any games yet. So uh, we'll, we'll find out sooner rather than later. And hopefully we're talking about uh, being wrong and that they're having a really good season and not, you know, like a seven or eight win season. Hopefully they are closer to that 10 wins that I picked on uh, on Friday during the show. So thank you so much for the call. It's good to hear from you. Next up, I got a text from Keegan in Vancouver, Washington. Said, what up, Q? It's Keegan from Vancouver, Washington. I know a lot of Raider Nation is going to have their panties in a bunch over Brady becoming a minority owner, but not me. I just want to see this team win. My only question is, do you think this has to do with Mark Davis trying to figure out the future of the Raiders on the business side? From what we know, he doesn't have kids, so who would take? Who would the team go to? It's all very interesting. Let me know, Q. Raiders. That's from Keegan in Vancouver, Washington. You know, I didn't think about, uh, you know, like the heir apparent of the, the Raiders, and I don't think that that's what it, what it is. I mean, Mark Davis plans on owning the Raiders for a very long time, uh, you know, so it's not like he's getting up there in age or anything. So I just think that he wants to to sell a minority share, and I think he wants Tom Brady to be involved in it. He did mention at the owners' meetings that, uh, you know, Tom Brady was – he was hoping to, to, to work out some more, more business ventures with Tom Brady. And so then finding out the news on Friday about – uh, you know, him potentially being a minority uh, owner of the Raiders, that, that makes sense, right? I mean, he said something. It wasn't, I wasn't there, but he was talking to Vic Tafer and Vinny and Paul Gutierrez and, you know, guys like that, all, all the reporters. He was talking to them at the owners' meetings, and, you know, they were basically asking how Tom Brady, how that, that popped up. And he said, hey, you know, me and Tom are good friends, and, uh, you know, I, I, I respect Tom, and he's a winner. And so at the end of the day, all it is is a, a, a small ownership part, if it even happens, because it hasn't happened yet, but they're in they're in talks and have been in talks for quite a while. So we'll see what happens. But, again, it's not going to affect anything on the field. So thank you for that text. It's good to hear from you. Got one more call. How about Emilio in Rancho Cordova? He's calling to talk about the Raiders' overall schedule and how many wins he thinks the Raiders could end up with. Here he is, Emilio in Rancho Cordova. Hey, what's up, Q? This is Emilio from Rancho Cordova. I was just calling. I haven't been called in a while, but I wanted to talk about the NFL release and the Raiders' schedule. Um, overall, it's pretty cool. I mean, the only thing that sucks is that we have two road games to start off the season, but I like how they uh, gave us a lot more primetime games, and uh, we got uh, two of those, uh, well, one of those primetime games on Christmas and then on New Year's Eve, so that's pretty cool. And then, uh, like you were talking about uh, in the last show, about having the bye week around a perfect time, and they gave us a pretty good uh, bye week around, I think it was week 13, so it's pretty good, man. I I say, I won't, you know, to be realistic, I think the Raiders could win about eight or nine games this year if everything goes to plan, because our offense looks really good. Our defense is the thing that's questionable, but I feel like, a good uh, a good way to turn around a uh, bad year that we had with only six wins. I think eight or nine wins would be a good step in that direction. So uh, what do you think about that record prediction, Q? Uh, yeah, just keep doing your thing, man. Love uh, listening to your podcast, listening every morning and getting uh, insight from the Raiders, from you, man. But, yeah, go Raiders. Thank you so much for the call, my man. Eight to nine wins. That's Again, a good number, man. It's kind of going back to what I was talking about in segment number two. It's just, it's, 
it's 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 frustrating almost, right? It's frustrating to go through the schedule and try to pick the wins and losses because you know you're going to be wrong on some. Some you're, you feel like, okay, uh, you know, I'm being too nice and I got to find a loss here or find a loss there. And I did that multiple times too. I was like, man, I, I think I've been too optimistic on this. I've picked way too many wins. And then you kind of go back through and say, well, you know, they did this last year and they were able to win these games and they were in this close game with even with Kansas City in week five last year. They were in that that shootout with them. They just you know, obviously ended up on the wrong end of things and they ended up on the wrong end of, of a lot of games. You know, I mean, I go back to week one last year against the Chargers. I mean, they turned the ball over, what, three times early in the game. They don't have all those turnovers, man. They're talking about a different ball game. But again, I mean, it, it, we could do a lot of ifs and buts, right? And it's, it's just at the end of the day, we really don't have any idea, but Again, more and more I go over it. You know, like I said, I, I keep coming up with nine, ten. I came up with eight when I just took a couple W's out there and forced a couple of L's in there, <laughs> right? And so, you know, I think, again, like I said in segment number two, man, anywhere from seven to ten wins feels pretty reasonable for the silver and black. And obviously, we'd all like them to be closer to the ten wins as opposed to the seven wins. So thank you so much for that call. I do appreciate you, and that's going to do it for today's show. Uh, thanks so much, as always, for making the show your first listen of the day. We definitely appreciate you. Shout out to my man Ari, who has this up on Twitter each and every day, or up on YouTube uh, each and every day. You can find him on Twitter at Ari Produces. Uh, thanks so much for checking us out on YouTube if you do. Uh, again, uh, I should be back in uh, Las Vegas, depending, like I said, on what time you're uh, listening to this. I might already be back. Got my radio show to do this afternoon. Actually going to be doing that from uh, the LV Aces, the Las Vegas Aces. They have a, a big media event going on today, their media uh, day before they get into the regular season. So I'll be broadcasting my radio show from there later on this afternoon. So uh, hopefully everything goes as good as it's supposed to go. <laughs> so more calls and texts will come up on tomorrow's show. We'll have more news and notes, and we'll have plenty of conversation around the silver and black as well. So there you go, Raider Nation. Appreciate you as always. Until tomorrow, take care of your family. Love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.